Christy Arkovich from Tampa, Florida, um, your student loan attorney. So we have been hearing a lot about the Navient Attorney General Settlement that just came out a few days ago. And I wanted to do a quick video about um, some of the folks who are going to be getting relief on that, what you need to do, if anything, and what is being carved out that you will not be getting any relief from this um, 39 different uh, state attorney generals that um, are settling the Navient claims. And these claims um, are all across the board. I mean, we're talking about um, an old uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau complaint that was filed where they alleged that Navient had incentivized its customer service representatives to uh, make sure there were short call durations. And so if, it, if, um, if a rep would take any time out to explain public service, for instance, or an income-driven plan, they would basically be taking money out of their own pocket. And so Navient incentivized that bad behavior. And so um, that is one of the complaints that's being addressed. Um, refraining from informing private loan borrowers that their loans are non-dischargeable in bankruptcy. That's one that we've had a particular beef about because all the time the servicers are out there saying, no, these loans are non-dischargeable in bankruptcy. And in fact, they may um, be fully or partially dischargeable. Um, either they're non-qualified education loans or perhaps there's an undue hardship or um, some other factor. And so um, misleading folks into believing that their situation can't be helped with bankruptcy is a problem. And, and there's a whole list of things. So what I'm looking at right now is there's a lot of information available on the NavientAGSettlement.com forward slash common dash questions. So that's NavientAGSettlement.com forward slash common dash questions. Um, you'll see the list of schools that might apply and so forth. So let's go over what exactly is this. So this settlement is roughly $1.8 billion uh, between Navient and 39 different um, state attorney generals or attorneys general, and it hasn't been approved yet. And so that means that a court has to sign off on the final documents and the documents could change before that happens. So you need to give it a little bit of time, uh, but not too long. Basically the window of the next action to be taken uh, within 30 days of court approval, there's to be notice sent out to borrowers. That might be postcards, might be letters, could even be emails, we really don't know, it could be a combination of things. But that's 30 days after the court approves. Um, then within 90 days of the court approval, uh, Navient has to discharge this debt. And then within 120 days, they need to remove it from the credit of that borrower. And so what are they actually getting rid of? Um, so first of all, Let's talk about the federal loans. There's a small, small part uh, that helps those with federal loans. Uh, one of the allegations with the CFPB is that um, Navient would not uh, talk about the income-driven plans whenever a borrower would call and ask and say, hey, I'm having a hard time making my payment. What can you do for me? Um, Navient would point, at least this was the allegations, Navient would point the borrower towards forbearance because that was the easiest and quickest way to get them off the phone. And they should have been talking about income driven plans with someone who can't maintain a minimum standard of living as well as make a student loan payment. And that's a chronic type situation, something ongoing. That person should have been in an income driven plan. They should have been accruing time towards forgiveness. And that was the result of the federal portion of the lawsuit settlement was that those who had been pushed towards forbearance would receive a one-time payment. Now, the one-time payment is very small. It's only $260. Um, most of our clients would not consider that to be fair. Um, they, I think, were damaged a lot more than $260 by continuing to have even the capitalization of interest alone, let alone the accrual uh, towards forgiveness. Uh, because if you remember, when you don't make a payment on forbearance, every time you roll off of forbearance, the interest is capitalized. So now you owe interest on the interest that you've accrued as well as your old principal balance. And that compounding effect hurts you. It's just like where Warren Buffett said that if you if you save $50 a week, uh, by the time you're 60, you would have basically a million dollars or whatever the math was, something like that. So the compounding works for you if you're investing. Well, it works against you if it's capitalizing and you're paying interest on interest. And that's what was happening with forbearances. Um, but it was the easiest way to get the person off the phone, give them an answer that you that they thought they wanted, which is how do I pay less on my student loan? 
without realizing the snowball effect of that bigger interest always becomes due. And every single day, every single week, I talk to borrowers that, that tell me, I've already paid my loan back. I've already paid my loan back plus two, you know, plus this rate of interest. When does it end? They still owe the same amount that they graduated with despite 20 some years of payments. That's how it happens. You've got this interest capitalization, this compounding effect, maybe even a default or two, forbearances and deferments, as opposed to utilizing the government programs that are there for you. So anyway, so that's going to happen automatically, this $260 one-time payment for those who were pushed into forbearance um, instead of maybe doing the income-driven uh, when that would have been a better option for them. You're not required to do anything to benefit for that. Um, Navient has agreed in the settlement for um, federal loan servicers. Now, this is for servicing. This is very limited because Navient's also getting out of the federal servicing business. So I suspect that the timing of them wanting to get out as well as the timing of the settlement have a lot to do with one another because I'm reading through probably about 20 some different things, this, this conduct reforms that Navient's required to make. And the majority of them seemingly deal with federal loans, at least a large part of them do, and they're not going to service federal loans anymore. So they kind of get a pass on that. Um, the things that they were supposed to start doing is advising people, if they learn that they're in public service, advising them of what public service loan forgiveness looks like. What do they have to do? They never did that before, at least not the clients that I spoke with. Um, sending notices uh, to borrowers about the limited waiver program for public service. Navient has agreed to do all of that, but again, Navient's getting out of federal servicing. So to what extent that's helpful, I'm not sure, but there is a lot of things that they need to start doing with private loans, um, refraining from charging multiple fees for single late payments or fees for entering forbearance. Um, there's some issues here with co-borrowers, you know, providing accurate information about how to remove a co-borrower and, and things like that. The bankruptcy thing I mentioned before, you know, telling people that their loans are non-dischargeable in bankruptcy, they're not supposed to do that any longer. And, and there's a bunch of other, other things too. And you can read that on that website I gave you before. Um, so what you're looking for to see if your loans potentially are discharged by this Attorney General Navient settlement. First of all, the loan has to have been originated by Sally May. So that's number one above all else. It also has to be dated 2003 or later. So January 1, 2003 through 2014. We usually don't have any loans after that that's even being talked about. So it's 2003 or later, basically. Um, as long as the loan was originated by Sally May, then potentially your loan can be discharged. The other things that are required um, is that you have to be in a particular state. Now, not all states have been involved in this settlement. Uh, there's been 38 states plus the District of Columbia. And Florida, where we're based out of, is one of the participating states, so that's great. Um, but the states that do not qualify, so in other words, if you live in any of these states, this, this settlement does not help you in any way, is Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, North and South Dakota, Oklahoma, uh, Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, New Hampshire, and then Puerto Rico and any territories. Those don't count. If you live in those states, this settlement doesn't do anything for you. But if you're in Florida or any of the participating 38 some states, you're good to go. Now, the other carve outs, the things that are required, this is one that I, I particularly don't like. And I hope that if this fits your situation, that you consider writing to or calling your state attorney general and telling them that this settlement is very unfair to you. That is that the loan has to have been in charge off status as of June 30 of 2021. So that means that people have to have not been paying for seven months prior to June 30 of 2021. And that would be before any payments were maybe put on forbearance during COVID. So they have to be delinquent, uh, not making payments that were due at the time that they were required. Um, if that fits you, then make sure to call or write your state attorney general and try to get them to do something about that provision. Because what's happening is there's a lot of folks who made their private student loan settlement or um, payment, and they made it because they were fearful of their credit being harmed. Well, they're being harmed now by being excluded from this discharge, this potential discharge of their loan, simply because they made payments on their loans. So it's very unfair. The loan is the loan. The loan should be written off. If it was a predatory loan, if it was whatever, it should be written off. It shouldn't be written off necessarily just because someone paid or didn't pay. Um, this is based on 
the, um, the qualifications of the loans themselves and how the loans were granted, not necessarily on how they were paid. So if you are excluded because your loan was not in charge off status as of June 30, 2021, then by all means, maybe try to you know, raise that with your state attorney general, get them to understand uh, if a large number of people do this, that may be taken away. Because remember, this settlement's not final. The court still has to approve it. Some of these provisions could change. And that is, I think, the weakest provision. And the unfairness of that provision, uh, there's another one too, I'll get to in a second, um, I think um, could undermine it just a bit. Um, the other is that, uh, remember where I said that only certain states will qualify? They're basing it on your last known address. So if you've moved and you now live in one of those states that are not participating, then you're not going to get any benefit of that. Again, the loan is a loan. And so I really would have liked to have seen wherever the loan was taken from, they've investigated and found out whatever representations were made at that time in that state are what the problem is, not necessarily where someone might have moved to. Um, and the other thing is, if you are military, um, any military personnel are covered, regardless of what state you live in, because you move around a lot. Well, what makes military special? I mean, we have a lot of folks that move around for different jobs. They don't count. So um, I think that's a very unfair provision to only apply it to those based on your last known address. Um, but it could work in your favor as well. If you've recently, if you went to Utah school, for instance, that was excluded and you've recently moved to Florida or something else, then you want to change your address with them quickly so that you'll be counted under the settlement. So um, it could work in your favor as well. The other categories are relief of relief are besides the charge off status is um, if you're an opportunity or recourse program, I actually have to do a little bit more review of that. I don't even know what that is. I haven't heard of an opportunity or recourse program. That to me means that it might be a fairly small uh, component of loans if I haven't even heard of it. Um, I don't know. Another option, another um, category of relief is alternative loans for the for-profit schools um, with certain FICO scores. So if you got a private loan and you went to a for-profit school and your FICO score was 669 or lower at the time of the origination of the loan, then you would be eligible for discharge. Um, if it's a nonprofit school, I believe it's 639. So there's some specific provisions about your FICO score. So if you were economically distressed, had a low FICO score, you got one of these loans at these schools, you may potentially be discharged. Now, interestingly enough, um, this is something that's going to happen automatically. Uh, I imagine they're going to use the information of what your FICO score is when they collected and originated the loan. Um, hopefully that was accurate at the time because you're not required to do anything to get this discharge. You're not required to update them with what your FICO score was in 2003, for instance. I mean, I don't even know how someone would find that, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, but, uh, but they should have that information in the origination file. So that should be fairly easy. Now, you also have to attend at a specific list of schools um, in order to get a discharge of your private student loans. The list is contained at navientoagsettlement.com. They have a list of common questions. It's number six. And the schools are uh, the Advanced Career Technologies, um, an ABC Training Center of Maryland and the Career Institute, Alta College. Basically, that is um, Westwood. We hear a lot about Westwood College. Um, the Apollo Group, which is University of Phoenix, that's included. ATI Enterprises, we don't really see much of those in Florida. Uh, Bridgepoint Education with Ashford University, I see a lot of those, so that's good. Uh, many, many schools with the Career Education Corporation. So that would be La Cordon Bleu, Sanford Brown. They did a teach out for IADT, that's a local school here in Tampa we sell a lot about. The American Intercontinental University, very common, Brooks Institute, haven't heard much about them. Colorado Technical University, I've heard a lot about them. Um, where we hear about these schools is a lot of borrowers have filed um, federal borrower defense claims for their federal loans. And many of these schools um, have allegations raised against them that they were uh, inflating job placement rates, um, that they were misrepresenting the accreditation of the school or the transferability of uh, what would be a national accreditation as opposed to regional. Regional accreditation is community colleges, national sounds better, but it's really not. And so there's a lot of folks who um, allege that yes, their school was accredited, um, 
but it was accredited by a um, national accreditor, ACICS, as opposed to regional, and therefore their credits were never accepted at, say, a four-year uh, state university to get a master's or PhD, or even to redo their education. They couldn't use any of the credits, so that was a big deal. Um, job placement rates, and there's a lot of allegations um, of varying nature uh, with job placement that might be um, including um, students that were actually paid at a job, paid by the school, um, or those that uh, maybe went back to their old jobs. Maybe they were considered uh, tech jobs when really they're retail at Best Buy, you know, a lot of misclassifications of what the job was. Um, but these are allegations that we typically would see with the federal borrower defense claims that we file. Um, but now many of these same schools are on this list for the attorney general settlement. And that leads me to believe that this list of schools may not be that different from what we may eventually see through the federal borrower defense program. Um, with the borrower defense program, obviously we have some of the earlier ones, Everest and Corinthian. Um, in June, we had ITT Tech, and then there were three smaller schools in July, um, schools I hadn't even heard of, Marinello School of Beauty, for instance, that's on this list. Um, so I do think that we're gonna see some overlap between the two. Um, other schools are IEDT that I mentioned, that was International Academy of Design and Technology and the Missouri College. I haven't heard much about them, but I'm in Florida, so I'm not surprised. Uh, Center of Excellence in Higher Education, which runs a bunch of different schools. Um, Corinthian, obviously, Everest, he Healed and Wyotech. Uh, DeVry is on the list. I'm a little surprised about that. Um, Ross University, Keller Graduate School of Management, Carrington College. We also have the Education Corporation of America. It runs Virginia College and Brightwood College. Um, Education Management Corporation, that includes the Art Institutes in Argosy, uh, Brown, Mackey, and South University. So Art Institutes in Argosy are on this list. That means if you have a private loan, again, that is in charge off status as of last June, as well as from one of those uh, 38 states plus the District of Columbia. And as long as your loan is... Um, dated after 2003, and as long as it was originated by Sally Mae. So you see there's a lot of hoops um, that have to have been jumped through in order for this discharge to occur. But if every one of those happens, then you would be getting a notice uh, this spring that your loans will be discharged. Um, we have Graham Holdings, which is Kaplan and Mount Washington, ITT, um, which obviously has already been in the federal list, uh, Lincoln Education Services, which runs the Lincoln Technical Institute, B&H Education, um, which runs apparently the Marinello School of Beauty is included and Premier Education Group, which runs a bunch of different medical and business schools, as well as uh, Salter College and Hallmark Institute of Photography. So again, that list is question number six at NavientAGSettlement.com under common questions. You'll see the list of schools. So if you have private loans from those schools, potentially your loans will be discharged. I don't suspect that list of schools is going to change. Um, I guess it's possible that uh, enough of the state attorney generals will get together and decide some other school needs to be included, but I would really doubt it at this time. Um, I don't think that list is gonna change. If anything could change, I would suspect that the charge off status um, possibly um, could change and maybe the mechanism to determine how someone uh, would be living in a state. Um, because I do think that those two elements are very unfair with respect to um, what happens if someone moves out of state or moves into a different state. Um, and then the same thing with charge off status, they're penalizing those that have actually paid on their loans and been paying their loans, even if it was credit repair um, type reasons. So um, those are the two areas I think we could see some changes if enough people went to their um, state attorney general to object if there was a reason to object. Okay, so again, um, if you have any questions about this particular settlement, please go ahead and reach out to us. Uh, we do do one-on-one -on -one consultations. If there's any questions you have about whether you're eligible for the settlement or if you're not eligible, what you should do. Um, if you are eligible, uh, this is going to happen automatically. Again, the time period is fairly short. Uh, there's 30 days to notify folks. 90 days to discharge and 120 days to actually remove the loan from someone's credit. Um, so I hope that your loans are covered by this settlement. Uh, there will be some further information. It's not final. 
So once it becomes final, we'll probably do another video if there's any substantial changes. Um, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.